Hi, thanks for joining us today. In the previous video, in part one, we discussed the basics of logs. And now we're going to discuss more of the properties of logs that let us combine expressions to form one expression, a very useful thing in order to solve problems. We have three main properties we're going to look at to help us expand or condense. The log of a product can be split up into a sum. The log of a quotient, when we have division inside a log, we can split it up with subtraction. And when we have a power, you can kind of think of this, you can kind of think of this as you can strip down the power to the outside and keep the A inside. Okay, one of the most useful aspects of logs is to get rid of powers like that. Okay. Um, these properties work for any base, but A and B both have to be positive. Why? Think about that for a second. Try to come up with the answer. Write it down. Three, two, one. It's due to that the domain of logarithm and, uh, the logarithm and, of logarithmic functions are only zero to infinity. And that because the range are only positives for E, the domain of a log can only be positives because log is the inverse. Okay? And also I want you to memorize a rule that people don't want. So not log a plus b equals log a plus log b. That's not true. I can say not, not. Not this. This is not that. That is not that. Don't do it. Please, 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 please. Here we go. Expand roughly means to make more complicated. To use these rules to write this out, you should be able to do both of these using these properties. If you pass the prerequisite courses. Three, two, one. Hopefully you got natural log of five. Minus natural log of 8. That's it. Here you may have felt lost of what to do. If you got stuck here, let's remember that the cube root is really the one-third power. Now do you see which rule applies? 3, 2, 1... We can bring the, nat the one third out, natural log, keep the inside the same. I hope sincerely that you stop there. It's not one third natural log x squared plus natural log one. That'd be horribly wrong, okay? That's what I'm talking about. A lot of students feel like they can split it up over addition. That's not a rule. If you have addition inside a log, you are stuck. Stop. That's it. Next. Condense. So into a single logarithm. Go ahead. Try this out yourself. It should mostly be just following the rules and bringing this back into your prerequisite knowledge, your pre-calc knowledge. You have answers for this one? Do you have answers for this one? Three, two, one. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring coefficients outside the log as powers inside the log. So I have natural log x to the negative three power plus natural log y to the fifth power. Next step, you should simplify, you should try to keep going. 
addition of two logs, not addition inside the log, but addition of two logs is the same as multiplying their inside, insides, plural like this. And if I wanted to simplify it furthest, I would write without a negative exponent. Try that now. Three, two, one. y to the fifth over x cubed. A negative exponent means we switch from side to the fractional. And that would be pretty much perfect in my book. Turning our attention to b. Try this out. Try this out if you haven't already. Here we go. So, one half inside. Oops. I'm going to move the negative 3 inside. I'm going to be careful about that. 3, 2, 1. Natural log of x to the 1 half power plus natural log x plus 1 plus natural log y to the negative 3. I always think it's a good idea to move the negative power inside. If you moved just the three, this is a minus, and you have to be really careful with your division. Hint. I'll show that solution in a second. Now we have a sum, so I can just multiply their insides all together. X to the one half, X plus one, and then y to the negative 3. We can simplify this a bit. Let's get rid of the negative power. Natural log. So that moved y to the basement of the whole fraction. They are all in one fraction now. So when y moves the side of the fraction it's on, because it has a negative power, y is going to move into the bottom of this fraction, the denominator of this whole thing. Do we have to simplify the top? Not necessarily. It's a debate about whether this is really that simple, whether this is any really, whether this is simpler at all or not. What is not debatable is that a negative exponent is simple. You, if the direction state is simplify, you must get rid of negative exponents. So that's solution one. That's the preferred solution. I think that's the easiest solution. Here's how it would play out without the negative. Without the negative. I mean, without moving the negative inside. Our first step would look very similar. You should think about what x to the one half power is. So let's say a student did this. If you were to do this, I would make sure you work from left to right, simplifying one step at a time, because I've seen people do some wacky stuff. They don't follow that rule. So now I write this as x to the 1 half times x plus 1 minus natural log y cubed. And then I know I have a subtraction of two logs, so I can condense this further into the division of both of their insides. You get the same answer, but you need to be careful. Because I've seen a lot of people divide this incorrectly. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. That should be a good final answer, possibly with that factor. Next, using these rules for condensation or expansion, you should be able to solve both of these for x. I have found that many students don't have enough practice with this or haven't practiced it recently enough. So if you get stuck, let the video play for a second. See if anything comes back. Three, two, one. 
First, I'm trying to solve for x. x is trapped way up here. The old way I would explain this in any of my algebra or math 1 classes is we're going to start with the stuff that's furthest away from x, like that plus 6. So my first step is to get rid of the 6 by subtracting 6 on both sides. Now, there's only one thing in the whole world that can undo exponential. You can think of this as taking the log of both sides. You can think of this better as write in logarithm form. Okay? So, we have a base e, that's going to be my base of my natural, my, my log, so I have natural log. So why is it natural log? Because it has to be log base e, the base stays the same, the output becomes the input, the output of y minus 6 became the input of my log with base e, and the old input became the new output. And now we're in a much safer spot. Now it looks a lot like it would have been math 1 or math 2 or math 3 and back in algebra. Add 5 to both sides. Careful that you did not add 5 inside the parentheses there. That would be very bad. And last but not least, divide the whole side, everything on both sides by 2. I have a lot of students who think they just have to divide this guy. No. It's cumulative. We're dividing the whole side by 2. And we're not going to simplify this. We're not going to do anything weird. That's just it. Done. Did you get it right? Did you get it wrong? All right. Here it's more complicated. Some students' instinct is to try to rewrite it. No. First, simplify or condense as much as possible. So that's a good tip whenever you're starting with logs. Condense first. That's why they teach you about condensation in math. Condensation in physics or chemistry is a whole different ballgame. Earth science? <laughs> I don't know. They have the same base. They have the same base. And we're subtracting. So it's the same as dividing the insides. Log base 2, this guy's the numerator, and everybody inside here is the denominator. And I'm going to go ahead and write this in exponential form. That's how we get rid of logs. You can think of it as, there's a lot of different ways to explain this. This is the clearest way I've ever found. We're just going to take this logarithm equation and write it in exponential form. The base of the logarithm becomes the base of my exponent. My old output becomes my new input. And the old input becomes a new output. 2 cubed is 8. You should definitely think about how to solve this if you didn't get here yet. Pause the video. If you can't solve this, that's not, a best, not the best sign. So really try. Think about it. If you said it without cross multiply, you would be correct. Eight x minus sixty four equals six x. Oof. Negative sixty four equals negative seven x. So we get x equals sixty four sevenths. Which is one crazy number.
I'll just write. Okay. Feel free to go back to the homework and try some problems out. We're going to continue on. I don't think there's make much sense to make a short, really short video on the next thing. Which is just the change of base formula. Now, this is a formula that you need to have memorized. There's no way around having this one memorized in this class. This is the formula that's key to doing a lot of the stuff. Particularly this version of it. Where any log with any base, we can change to log of x divide by natural log of the base. Put the base in the basement is what some people say. This base ends up in the bottom of the fraction. Okay, now, unfortunately for you, this sentence is not true. If you have an 84, this is not true. If you have an 84, this is not true. If you have an Inspire, also not true. Obviously, Inspire has more functions. So, a student has shown me this. A student showed me another way of doing this. But you have to know this way anyway. So here we go. Use your calculator to find log base 7 of 112. Well, log base 7, and you'll have test questions to do this. So again, there's no way out. We're going to do natural log of the input on top. And natural log of the base on the bottom, base in the basement. Okay, that's the exact value. I saw my old output, so I can quit. So we're going to do natural log 1112 divided by, make sure you close that parentheses, divided by natural log, again right above the store. Seven. You get two point. How many decimal places do we need? Quick, three. So, four two four is okay because we're just truncating, or four two five. I'd write this out as. Oh, sorry, I forgot. Two point. Two point. I'm always around here. I had to leave the rounding. It's a nicer answer. Again, 424 is fine. I would accept it. All right. The other way to do it on the calculator, in TI-84, you can also do this. Again, you need to know this method. Don't get overexcited. Is log of 112, comma, 7. Okay. So log 112 comma 7. We get the same thing. Okay? Does that make sense? Two methods. You only have to know the first one. Care about using the second one. The order here is really easy to screw up. It's much easier for me to think of base goes to the basement. All right. So we're going to use that fact in here, in example 10, find an exact value for x, an exact value, an exact value means a non-decimal. This was one of the more disappointing questions on the very first test you all took, so that's not decimal. And the first test told you not decimal, and you all wrote it. Um, so, a not decimal thing for this guy. So, we want to start by solving this for x. Go ahead, I'll give you a chance. Look over your notes, pause the video, try it out. Write something down. It's better to try and be wrong in a race than to do nothing. Three, two, one. Spoiler alert. Well, the first thing you want to do is write it into logarithm form. The base over here should be the base of the log. The old output should be the new input. And the old input should be the new output. 
solve for x, log base 3 of 6 minus 2. Not 6 minus 2, not log base 3 of 4. That's the exact value. Use your calculator to find a decimal value. Go ahead, try it out. Did you get a decimal value? You have three decimal places. Three, two, one. So I want to do, I'm going to do the change of base formula. You will make sure you do log. The input is three divided by the basement, something like that. And then we'll subtract two from that. Three decimal places, three, six, nine. Negative 0 0.369. For your note's sake, what you inputted there, you don't have to write that. That's what you inputted. AP will accept that. But again, what we did was natural log of 6 divided by natural log 3. The basement and the basement, and then we subtracted 2. Okay, that's what x was. Okay? Oh, that was it. My bad. Sorry. But there's one more slide. Anyway, you feel free to try out the rest of the homework. Particularly try examples... Yeah, 28 through, really I want to say the end, but 38 was the new stuff, or, well, this whole lesson is review, so, on page 148 to 148. Take it easy, this should not be hard. If it's hard, I can help. Please come see me. I can make you good at this. But if it's easy, that's good. That means you learned a lot in your prerequisite course and retained it. If it's hard, it might not mean you didn't learn a lot. It might mean you didn't retain it. Maybe you didn't learn. I don't know. Have fun. Thanks for watching.